He eludes one tackle. He's going to carry it forward, and Johnston is going to run it into the end zone for the touchdown. And here is the kickoff. It is a low liner kick. It's going to be caught by number 11 for Blacksburg. That is Drew Babcock, and he will return it up to about the 42-yard line. So Blacksburg will have very good field position for their first offensive series of the 2018 Battle of the Birds. Nice little replay there by Babcock. He just caught that ball easily right in the chest and just brought it forward. Didn't try to do too much with it. Once he got hit, he went down and uh, give the Bruins a great spot here to start this contest. It will be Babcock and Cordell Croy to the near side. Thomas Coffey to the far side. Mitchell is in the backfield to the right of the quarterback, Johnston, in shotgun formation. Also Muhammad on the left side. He comes in motion, comes in front of Johnston, takes the handoff on the sweep, has Mitchell trying to block for him, and he's going to be thrown down for a loss of two yards. He was tackled by Maston Stanley. So Blacksburg loses, they'll call it a yard and a half on the first offensive play of the game. Stanley in the backfield, so is number 75, Xavier Wright. Bruins are going to have to find a way to slow down this defensive front for the Blue Demons. Good side-to-side -side defense shown there by Christiansburg. Second and 11 for Blacksburg. This time they have two in the backfield in a pistol formation. Mitchell behind Johnston. And to his immediate right was Cordell Croy. Johnston looking long, fires, wants to hit Thomas Coffey. And it's going to be broken up at about the 15-yard line. Good coverage downfield by Blacksburg as the Bruins went for it deep on second down, now third and 11. Trevor Simpkins with the break up there, Mark, and uh, did a good job of reading the eyes of Coffey and getting his head around so that he could knock that ball away and not get the pass interference. And guys, I just want to say as I get ready to exit here and make way for Brad Epperly on behalf of everybody at ESPN Blacksburg, thank you both for everything you've done this year for calling these games. Our pleasure, Brad. Welcome to the booth. Three receivers left, one right. Pass out in the flat on the left side is to Muhammad. He tries to break one tackle. He does, but he's going to be stopped short of the midfield stripe. They'll mark it at about the 48-yard line, and Christiansburg's defense does its job. Blacksburg will have to punt on its first offensive possession of the game. Brad, welcome back. Thank you, Mark. Glad to be back up here. I'm sure that was a moment you'll never forget. I will not. That was um, it's been a long time coming. That was the day that I sort of dreaded all season long, to be honest. Luke Goforth stands at about his 33. He gets the punt away. It's a wobbler right down the middle of the field. Takes a very decided Blacksburg bounce. It's going to roll dead at about the 16-yard line. Bobby Hudson will call it the 17. So that is a 35-yard punt. And Christiansburg will take over first and 10. They are moving from our right to our left. If you're familiar with the stadium, that is from the locker room side to the concession room side. Ball on the near side hash mark. Great night for football in Blacksburg. A warm front in the area. It's going to give way to a cold front and some pretty massive rains forecasted for tomorrow night. So this game moved to tonight on Thursday. Twin receivers on either side of the line of scrimmage for Christiansburg. Clemens will open up that quarterback. 6'5", 215, has great size. And there was movement up front, and that play is going to be stopped before it gets started. I believe that, that Christiansburg might have moved a little bit quick. Looked like the right guard may have moved for Christiansburg. That's going to move them back five Ball's yards started, yeah. here, Mark. So first and 15 for and Christiansburg. Ball on the near side hash mark. And this time they go three receivers to the right, two to the left. And we were told that they may do some five wide sets, which we haven't seen much on tape tonight. That's exactly what they're doing here. Back comes the snap, and here come the yellow flags again. And again, it looks like there may have been a little bit of movement on the part of Christiansburg, and that is the call. I think it's from the same direction there, so it's going to move them back another five yards. Good start here for the Blacksburg defense. So the ball is going to be marked on the seven, and if it happens again, it's not going to be five yards. It's going to be three and a half. Got to think, Brad, there's a little bit of jitters here 
that's going to have to get out of the way in this battle of the Bergs. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Blacksburg's defense moving around. Now they get adjusted. Straight ahead goes the quarterback, Jake Clemens, right up the center, and he'll have it up to about the 10-yard line for a gain of three. Good job there. Way to stick her nose in there by the Bruins. Second and 17. Looks like Sawyer's in on the tackle there for the Bruins. The game two minutes old, no score. Blacksburg forced to punt. It was a three and out on their first possession. This is the first possession for Christiansburg. Again, it's three right, two left. Receiver wise, here's Clemens throwing. Batted up in the air and almost a deflection intercept and a nice play by Nathan Mathena, who's out there starting for Blacksburg in the backfield. Yes, good job there by Nathan. He, he batted it up. Everly was coming from the inside, but uh, batted it just a little bit too far. Everly couldn't quite reach it, but uh, what a great play by Nathan Mathena. He's one of those players that has been coming on as this season has gone along, and he is out there starting tonight. Again, three receivers to the right, two to the left for the Blue Demons. Clemens alone in the backfield, runs it ahead, has an opening. He's up over the 25 and up close to the first down. Let's see where they mark it. He may have it. Third and 17, and it looks like Clemens picks up 18. That was just a designed quarterback run right up the gut, and there were no blue jerseys to get him. Yeah, the pressure came from uh, the inside backer. Everly came from one side, and uh, it looked to me like Clemens just basically picked the other hole, and uh, it, was, it was a big hole there, and he took it. Three receivers to the left side. A single receiver to the right. Hunter is in the backfield now with Clemens. Handoff goes, no. Clemens fakes the handoff. He'll go straight ahead up to about the 35 yard line. In the backfield was Kyle Herndon with the quarterback, Clemens, and he keeps it again for a gain of, looks like about six. This is going to be Christiansburg's offense tonight. I mean, you know, you got a six foot five, 215 pound quarterback. They're going to let him tote the mail here. Three receivers left, single receiver right, play action. Missing the quarterback in the backfield was Norris, but there to clean it up was another blue jersey. Looked like Epperly in on the tackle coming from that inside backer position. Good job just sort of scraping over to the end. That will make it third and three. The ball on the far side, hash mark. Christiansburg's players looking to the sideline to get the play call. Three receivers on the boundary side of the field. Two on the field side, closest to us. Empty backfield for Clements. He takes the snap. He'll try to run forward, stutters, stops, and he's going to be brought down I think about a half yard short of the first down at about the 38. Yeah, it looks to me like it's a little bit short. He got a very uh, uh, good spot. Uh, if you're a Christiansburg fan, um, it was very close, but um, I believe he might be just a little bit short, but uh, I'll be honest, uh, with as much uh, yardage as he's been, been able to pick up each carry, you might see them go for a fourth down here. Well, when you're two and seven and you're trying to get into the playoffs, we'll find out. Maybe on this down coming up, what kind of a riverboat gambler Alex Wilkins is. And it looks like there is a penalty, perhaps. Christiansburg's players are walking backwards. They're, they're sliding back because of the chains. Oh, I see. They're clearing out for the chains, which is something we haven't seen too much of this season. Chains stretch out, and it is a first down by a nose. So Christiansburg picks up their second first down on this first offensive possession of the game. And the Blue Demons are showing, Brad, they've showed up at this 100th Battle of the Bergs to play. Oh, absolutely. Well, you, you know, we've, we've talked about it. It's a rivalry game. You throw everything out. Uh, they're going to bring everything they got. Blacksburg's going to bring everything they got. And at the end of the day, we'll find out who wins. Triplets left, twins right, empty backfield for Clemens. He looks to his left, awaits the snap, man in motion to the near side, fakes the handoff. Clemens goes straight ahead again, and he's going to get up to about the 43-yard line. And right now, the offense for Christiansburg is just simply running the quarterback, Clemens. Epperly in on the tackle there. They just basically are doing a little bit of misdirection. They came off of like basically a fake, fake jet sweep to uh, MJ Hunter there. And uh, once again, it's Clemens with the ball going up the middle. Earned it in the backfield this time. To the left of the quarterback, Clemens. Single receiver right. Triplets to the left. Here is the handoff to Herndon. He's going to be brought down in the backfield. A nice tackle by Logan Hudson for a loss. Great job there by Hudson coming from that outside backer position. Just sealing the deal right there, not letting him get outside and, and just wrestles him down for a 
for a, a loss. You know what their offense reminds me of, Brad? Reminds me of the Logan Thomas running offense that Virginia Tech had a few years back. Well, Jake Clemens is built very similar to Logan Thomas, that's for sure. Herndon again in the backfield, single receiver right, triplets to the left, back goes the quarterback, Clemens fires out into the flat, tried to hit his receiver, number seven, MJ Hunter, and over his head, and looks like Christiansburg is going to put the punt team on the field. Not a bad thrown ball there by Clemens, just it was a little bit high, and uh, uh, MJ was not able to pull it in for the Blue Demon, so it looks like they're going to bring the punt team on. And and something, Brad, that could play into that incompletion. It was just a little bit high. This field has a little bit of a crown to it. Christiansburg's field, obviously artificial turf, has no crown at all. It takes a little bit of adjustment. You're right, and it's more than just a little bit of a crown. It's a pretty good size one out there. Awaiting the snap. Back it comes. It's clean. It's away. It is Caleb Henley with the punt, and it'll be a fair catch called for by Brian Mitchell at the 31-yard line of Blacksburg. Check that. It was number 30 for Blacksburg. That is Brian Mitchell. Check that, the 21-yard line. I'm being a little bit too gracious here for uh, the Bruins. At the 21, Brian Mitchell with the fair catch. Cordell Croy and Kareem Muhammad to the near side. Coffey to the far side. Mitchell is in the backfield with Johnston standing to his right. Hand off to Mitchell, stutters, goes around the left side and he will be brought down. It looks like maybe for a loss of one at the 20. I tell you what, that uh, that Christiansburg side of that defense is pretty, pretty tough over there. That was Trevor Simpkins, number 32, in on the tackle for the Blue Demons. I watched them a little bit Friday night and when they were playing Cave Spring and they were impressive over there on that side of the ball. It will be Troy, check that Croy rather, and Golston to the far side. Coffee to the near side, Johnston has some time, throws, wants to hit his receiver who manages to hang onto the football. A nice catch made at about the 33 yard line by Kareem Muhammad for a Nest Realty first down. What a terrific catch there by Kareem, I tell you. He took a I mean, shot. He he was extended out and, and had enough focus and uh, to, to pull the ball in, but about the time the ball hit him, I mean, he was, he was hit, but uh, what a great job there. Blacksburg will bring Coffee to the near side. Triplets, Muhammad, Croy, and Golston to the far side. Running back Mitchell goes in motion. Pass out to Mitchell in the flat. He has room to go over the 40, over the 45 of the midfield, over the 45 of Christiansburg, and he'll be marked out at the 44 of Christiansburg. There is a flag, I believe, on the play at about the 34-yard line of Blacksburg. This one may come back. Yeah, it looks like the, the Bruins are moving backwards, so I, I think that it probably is. It, it's sort of in the spot of possibly a block in the back or a hold. We'll see what the official's call is here. He wipes out a really nice gain of 23 for Mitchell. It, it, it is a block in the back there uh, against Blacksburg, so it's going to move them backwards. As you said, that was a very good, uh, very good play call there by Coach Johnston. Uh, they had been bringing some pressure and just sort of set up that little screen out to Mitchell. Mitchell had lined up to the left of Johnston. He flared out to the left side, and Johnston hit him in the flat. A nice pickup, but it all comes back. And it's first and 19. Triplets to the right. Single receiver, Coffee to the left. Again, Mitchell goes in motion. Johnston wants to throw it over the middle. Has Croy at the 40, and he'll be brought down at the 41. Good job right there. Everybody thought it was going to be the same play. The defense had sort of shifted over to Mitchell, and uh, Grant did a good job of faking it towards him, and then uh, Cordell Croy right in the middle uh, able to haul that one in. A 17-yard pickup, so it'll be second and a long two for Blacksburg. The ball on the near side hash. It'll be Golston, Croy, and Muhammad on the boundary side closest to us across the way. It'll be Thomas Coffey. Mitchell is to the left of the quarterback, Johnston. Johnston has it, throws out in the flat, has Golston, and he's going to be brought down at about the 45-yard line, but it will be enough for a Nest Realty first down for Blacksburg. Good job there by Josh Golston coming up with the catch. A little bit of extracurricular activity over on the sideline there. Um, I'm surprised that there was not an uh, unsportsmanlike penalty thrown right there against Christiansburg. 
And that's something we'll have to watch tonight. This is one of those rivalry games where tempers have to be held in check. You don't want to get thrown out of a game, particularly with the playoffs coming up for at least Blacksburg and possibly also for Christiansburg. Muhammad and Coffey to the far side, Twins to the near side. Back comes the snap play action to Mitchell, pass out in the flat to Coffey. Started to his right, cut back to his left, and he's going to be up to about the midfield stripe, maybe just slightly beyond for a gain of four, maybe five. Yeah, good little pickup right there. They will mark it at the 49 of Christiansburg, so it is second and five for Blacksburg. Players looking to the sideline to get the play call. Coffee this time will come to the near side. Croy and Golston to the far side. Muhammad lines up in the slot on the right. Mitchell in the backfield to the left of Johnston. He goes out. Johnston throws over the middle and dropped by Mitchell on a nice wheel route at about the 30-yard line. Oh, wow, that was, a, that was a good pass right there by Grant Johnston. Uh, he put just enough steam on it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Brian just couldn't quite get turned around there to haul that one in. That makes it third and five. No score in the game. 4.15 remaining in the first quarter. The 100th meeting that can be verifiably documented between Blacksburg and Christiansburg, the centennial version of the Battle of the Bergs. Blacksburg, of course, going for an undefeated 10-0 regular season. Triplets bunched tight to the line of scrimmage on the right. Twins likewise on the left. Johnston flushed out of the pocket, and he's going to be brought down. I believe they finally get him back at about the 40. He is sacked. Yeah, it looked like there was a gang of folks on him there. Number 10, Liam O'Reilly, uh, first one in. Looked like Mac, Mac Padgett as well. And this Christiansburg team, Brad, they picked up a little bit of momentum. Last Friday night in the rain and the cold with their shutout. And they have showed up to play. Well, you, you have to know that they're, that they're here to play. I mean, you know, that's, why it's a, that's why it's a game. And uh, um, on any given day, um, any given team can win against the other one. So uh, that's why you got to show up every, every time you step on that field. So, again, it will be Luke Goforth who will punt it away at about his 30. And it will be a very high kick. It's going to bounce up the 40 and bounce back towards the Christiansburg side of the field. That's going to be a very short punt. It's going to be down at the 46-yard line. That is just a 10-yard punt. And I've got to say, Brad, that is the first time all year that Luke Goforth has not gotten off at least a decent punt. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Sometimes it happens. I mean, you can't be 10 for 10 every time. So, uh uh, just sort of, sort of bounced off of his foot wrong, and uh, wasn't able to get a lot of uh, uh, yardage out of it. But um, you know, if I gotta, if I gotta put my betting money on somebody, I'm, I'm gonna bet on Luke Goforth because he's a tough one. Triplets to the right, twins to the left. Empty backfield for Clemens. Back it comes. He wants to throw it. Quickly throws out in the flat, and a jarring tackle by Josh Golston knocks the ball away from Connor Brizendine. What a block! Yeah, it's a little bit of emotions going on out there. That's what you want to see in a rivalry game. You just got to keep it under control. You don't want to let it get out of hand, um, but but you want to play with a lot of energy and a lot of emotion. Second and 10, same formation. Twins to the left, triplets to the right for Christiansburg. They do drop the slot receivers about two yards off the line of scrimmage. Clemens about four yards behind the line. Motion to the right. Pitch is over to MJ Hunter, trying to get around the edge, and he will get a little bit of yardage. They'll mark him out at about the Blacksburg 48-yard line. It looked like Luke Goforth was able to run him out of bounds there. Um, looks like he picked up about five on the carry. See where the official marks it. He marks it with the nose of the football on the 48-yard line on the far side hash. Maybe Make a that a gain of six. six. Yeah, a little bit more than five. Triplets this time to the near side. Twin receivers to the far side. An empty backfield for Clemens. In motion is Hunter to the near side. He gets the pitch and he gets dropped. For a loss, it was Jacob Lucas that nailed it. Big Jacob Lucas coming in from that defensive end spot. 
Drew Babcock came off the edge, and, and that's when MJ tried to cut it up, and that right there was Jacob Lucas. So that'll make it fourth and seven, and Christiansburg will go into punt formation. It will be Caleb Henley pumping for Christiansburg. He'll be standing at his own 35. Mitchell is backing up. He will stop at about the Blacksburg 20. No score in the first quarter. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Blacksburg and Christiansburg, the 100th battle of the Bergs. Blacksburg looks like they may be coming after this punt. And it's high oh, it's over the head of the punter. And here comes Blacksburg. And making the smart play is Caleb Henley just falling on it at the 21-yard line. And the first major break in the game, the first turnover, goes to Blacksburg. Well, I tell you, I was, I was just getting ready to say we're going to have to watch Caleb Henley because he's probably the best athlete on the football team for Christiansburg. I've watched that kid come up all the way through, and he's always been impressive. Got great wheels, great hands. And I was I was afraid that they might try a fake punt right there, but uh, ends up, you know, the punt goes over his head. And uh, what a break for the Bruins. Three receivers to the right for Blacksburg. Mitchell is to the right of the quarterback, Johnston. Coffee to the left side. Handoff, Mitchell trying to sweep it to the left. Stops, cuts it inside, and he'll have a gain down to about the 16-yard line, a gain of five. Good job there by Brian Mitchell. There was a little bit of a seam there. That defense did a good job of containing him, but he was able to pick up some yardage there just by sort of great footwork by Mitchell. I took the words out of my mouth there, Brad. I was going to say some very nifty footwork by Brian Mitchell to get five yards out of that play. Looked like it was only going to get maybe a couple. And Mitchell doing a little bit of stutter stepping to make it work. Croy and Mitchell in the backfield. Max protect formation for Blacksburg. Running back on either side of the quarterback, Johnston. Twins to the left, single receiver right. Johnston back. Everyone goes out. Johnston firing over the middle. A sliding catch. Made for the touchdown by Drew Babcock from 16 yards out. Six nothing Blacksburg. Great job there, Grant Johnson throwing the strike into the end zone, and and once again Drew Babcock just being the athlete that he is takes makes the sliding catch and uh, secures the ball, gives the Bruins the six to nothing lead. The score comes with 1:28 remaining in the first quarter. And Chad Sheeler is on to attempt the PAT out of the hold of Luke Goforth. The snap will come back from Craig Weaver. Sheeler, the left-footed kicker for Blacksburg. Back comes the snap, a good hold by Goforth. The kick is up in the air, and that kick is good. And Blacksburg extends the lead to 7 to nothing over the Christiansburg Blue Demons. 128 remaining in the first quarter. You're listening to the 100th Battle of the Bergs on your local station, ESPN Blacksburg, 93.1 and 97.1 FM, and Z101.3 and 105.9. Chad Sheeler about ready to kick it off. He looks to his right, then his left. He puts his left foot into it. It's a high end of a end kick. It's going to be caught at about the 13-yard line. 
Going upfield with it is Henley. And he's going to be brought down at about the 27-yard line. Great job right there, Parker Epperly, number 12, coming down off of that kickoff team, making the tackle, along with, it looked like number 70, Sam Hughes. Well, as usual, folks, if you're listening tonight, we'd love to hear from you. If you send us a text at 866-961-1430, 866-961-1430, give us your name and where you're listening from. We'll try to get as many of those on the air as we can. Three receivers right, single receiver left, the single running back Herndon in the backfield with the quarterback Clemens. Quick pass out in the flat, complete to... Tristan Widrig and several Bruins conspire to put him down close to the first down marker at about the 38 yard line. Looked like uh, Cole Epperly as well as uh, Nathan Mathena in on that tackle there for the Bruins. Not before he's able to pick up good yardage. And the officials are going to say it's a first down. That looked to me like Brad it was at least a yard short. Wow, I thought it was too. But the chains are moving for Christiansburg. Again, triplets to the right. Single receiver to the left is Widrig. Clemens hands it off straight ahead, goes the running back, and he's going to be brought down in the backfield. That was Kyle Herndon. It's going to be a loss of about four. Big time loss there. Jacob Lucas coming in from that tackle position, making some noise. And actually, I'm sorry, coming in from that end position, making some noise, just nowhere for Herndon to go. This may be the final play of the first quarter. The clock at 32 seconds and moving. 7 nothing. Blacksburg leading. Triplets to the right, twins to the left, an empty backfield for Clemens. He looks both ways, gets set, in motion, goes under to the far side. Clemens has some room to go. He'll have the first down. He's over the 40, up to about the 42 or 43. Initial hit there by 18 as well as uh, Golson. Able to pick up a few yards there for the uh, Blue Demons. Uh, once again, just sort of Faking having a little bit of misdirection, sending that jet back in one way and then Clemens coming back in the other. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. Blacksburg will take the lead in the 100th Battle of the Bergs at the end of the first quarter. The score is 7 to nothing. You're listening to Bruins Football on your local station, ESPN Blacksburg and Z101.3 and 105.9. Clement. Clemens goes back into pass formation and he is brought down and that was a coverage play. His receivers were very much covered and he just simply had to tuck the ball and try to make something out of it. Yes sir, great job there by Jacob Lucas. Once again, we've called his name a few times tonight. Uh, just making a little bit of noise there coming from that uh, backside defensive end position. 
So Henley will punt it away at about his 30. Punting from now our left to right as the teams trade ends of the field as we begin the second quarter of play. Mitchell is standing at about the 24-yard line. Last punt was a high snap over Henley's head. Which led to Blacksburg points. This is a good snap, and the kick is away. It's a wobbler, but it's heading towards the Blacksburg sideline. It's going to bounce out at about the 45, check that, the 35-yard line of Blacksburg. A 24-yard punt for Christiansburg, and Blacksburg will have it in good field position at their own 35. Yeah, very good field position here for the Bruins to start the, out of the second quarter. What do you know? I just got one over Robbie. Robbie called it 25. It was actually 24. I'm How about at, that? I'm looking at the officials. That's, <laughs> that's a rare occurrence right there. <laughs> Twin receivers to the right. Single receiver to the left. Pistol look for Blacksburg. Strong to the left side. Mitchell gets the carry. Goes straight ahead up the middle, and he's going to do well, well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, he may get a yard out of it. Second and long coming up for Blacksburg. They lead 7-0. 10-53 remaining before halftime. Well, I tell you, you know, that defensive front right there uh, for Christiansburg, 75, Xavier Wright, he is, a, he is a great player. That young man, I think, will play at the next level. Uh, he got good size and good quickness, and, uh, you know, it's hard to run into that. Blacksburg trying to get the play call. Now they do. Three receivers bunched tight to the line of scrimmage on the left. Twins to the right. Empty backfield for Johnston. He glides to his left. Now he's going to have to run for his life. Throws it out into the flat where Josh Golston spins away from one tackle. Tries to spin away from another. Finally gets slung down, but it's going to be a nice gain of seven for Blacksburg. Great, great job there after the catch by Golston. Uh, Maston Stanley had came over and, and, and put a good, pretty good lick on him, but he was able to sort of make a move and, and gain a little bit of space away from Stanley and was able to pick up probably four more yards after the hit. Third and a long three for Blacksburg. The ball's on the far side hash. Three receivers will deploy on the left side. Twins on the right, close to the line of scrimmage. Johnston alone in the backfield. Throws, has his receiver. That's Muhammad. He's got it over midfield. And he's going to be run out of bounds at about the 40-yard line, maybe the 41 of Christiansburg. Muhammad showing his speed right there. You know, it didn't look like he was going to be able to get, but about four or five yards. But he turned it upfield and sort of went right down the sideline for a good pickup there. They'll spot at the 42 for a gain of 16. And a Nest Realty first down for Blacksburg. Golston and Croy will deploy to the right. Twins to the left. Mitchell is about a yard to the right of the quarterback, Johnston, as always in shotgun. He throws it out into the flat. Croy has it at about the 40, and he is knocked down. But he holds on, and it will be a gain of about three, maybe just two. Let's see where they mark it. Another good job there by Croy. I tell you, that's a long pass from Grant Johnson all the way over on that side of the field. So it gives the defense an opportunity to sort of size it up, and that's exactly what he did. When Cordell Croy's hands went up, M.J. Hunter came flying up, and about the time the ball reached uh, Croy, that's when M.J. Hunter reached him as well. Coffee on the numbers on the far side. Three receivers on the near side are Muhammad Croy and Golston on the far outside. Back comes the snap. Johnston looking, throws over the middle, has Mitchell, but he's going to be brought down at about the 36-yard line. Good coverage there by number 32, Trevor Simpkins uh, for the Blue Demons. Able to pick up a few yards uh, by the Bruins, but uh, it's going to bring up a third and about four. Good open field tackling by Christiansburg. Twins on either side this time. Mitchell will line up to the right of the quarterback, Johnston, separated by about two yards. Mitchell will get the carry, goes straight ahead. He's dragging one tackler. It's going to be close whether or not he got the first down. It will depend on the spot. It looks like he does. They're going to mark it at about the 31. He needed four. Looks like they're going to give him about five. Yeah, it looks to me like it's a that, that it's a first down. But yeah, there we go. They're moving. They're moving the chains. Good job there by Brian Mitchell, just keeping those legs churning. So that's a Nest Realty first down for Blacksburg. 8-18 remaining before halftime. Seven to nothing. Blacksburg leading Christiansburg in the 100th. Battle of the Birds. 
triplet slept. Single receiver right. Mitchell this time lines up to the left of his quarterback, Johnston, who looks over the line of scrimmage, claps his hands. Back comes the throw to Kareem Muhammad. He'll be brought down at about the 25-yard line. Call the game of seven. You know, right now, we haven't really hit anything deep. We've just sort of been throwing these small routes, picking up four, five, seven yards a time, every so often getting into the double digits. Uh, sooner or later, well, they're going to lull that defense up, and we're going to bust them deep. I, I, can, I can feel it coming. I think Coach Johnson's setting something up here. Muhammad Croy and Golston again are the triplets to the right. Between the numbers and the sideline is Coffey on the near side. Mitchell in the backfield, play action, and the official blows the play and dead. I did not see a flag on the field, Brad, but well, now I do. It's down at about the 24-yard line. Probably a false start. Well, the official just gave the signal of uh, a neutral zone infraction, but it went against Blacksburg, so that's so, got to be. So there's a possibility that a receiver lined up no, offside. 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 Could be. You don't see that call very often no. in football. I think we've been doing this, what, five years? I don't think I've seen that one before. Yeah. Muhammad Croy and Golston to the right. Coffee to the left. Mitchell stands beside his quarterback. Johnston going deep. He has a receiver wide open in the middle of the field. Cordell Croy has it down to the two-yard line, a gain of 28. Good job there, Grant Johnston finding Cordell Croy. We talked about it just a couple minutes ago, sort of baiting him up and then going deep. You know this game a little bit, don't you? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I try to know a little bit. I learn something every time I, I, I watch a game, to be honest. You know more about football than I ever will. Coffee to the right. The triplets are to the left. Back comes the snap. Hand off to Mitchell, and oh, does he get blown up. What a nice tackle by Mac Padgett. Yeah, I tell you, Mac Padgett came through there and, and, and sort of laid the wood right there to Brian Mitchell. Uh, Padgett's a good-sized young man, plays aggressive, plays uh, intense. 5'11", 210, and it's in the right places. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he brought it that time. Blacksburg looks to the side to get the play call. Receivers swapping sides of the field. This time it's going to be twins on either side. It will be Muhammad and Coffey to the near side. Croy and Golston to the far side. Mitchell is to the left of the quarterback, Johnston. Second and two. Back it comes to Johnston. He's in the backfield. Now he's going to run to his left. Still running, throwing, and he's just going to throw it away. And it will be third and goal from the two. Johnson rolls left. Gonna have to try to find a way to get that ball in here. You know, when you're down in short territory, this has happened a couple weeks here, um, just trying to find a way to get it into the end zone. You don't want to settle for a field goal right here. Four red zone penetrations against Hidden Valley, and all Blacksburg could come up with was four field goals by Dawson Racic, who had a great night kicking the ball, but Blacksburg would love to get the ball in the end zone and go up two touchdowns right here. Pistol formation, strong to the right. Twin receivers right, single receiver left, handoff, Mitchell, and he's not going to get in. He's going to get stopped right about the line of scrimmage and give Christiansburg's defense credit. And the handoff up the middle. Let's see if Blacksburg sends Rasick onto the field. Looks like it will be Sheeler that will come onto the field this time. Yeah, looks like the field goal team's coming in, going to try to get some points out of it. Big Floyd Clyburn going out onto the field to block for Blacksburg. Go forth will set up on the far side hash mark at the 10. So this will be a 20 yard field goal attempt. A low snap and Goldforth is just gonna have to pick it up and try to throw it. It's batted up in the air and it's no good. And a snap that went awry costs Blacksburg three points. And Christiansburg is hanging around in this game. 529 remaining before halftime. Still just 7-0 Blacksburg. Well, as crazy as it is, that almost worked, uh, even with the high snap, because Everly had slid out from this uh, side position over here and was actually wide open. And that's who Goforth was trying to get the ball to it. But whoever batted the ball up, 
made a, a, a great play right there to stop that play. You know, we did a two-point conversion like that early in the year. I, I don't remember exactly who we were playing, but it almost looked identical to that. So, Christiansburg takes over, but they will take over on their two-yard line. Now they have to be careful not to have a negative yardage play, or it could result in two points for Blacksburg. A double tight end set for Christiansburg. Movement before the snap, and Clemens just tries to run it right up the gut, and he'll get very precious little, if any. Looked like Babcock in on the tackle there for the Bruins. Give him a yard. Clemens will get one yard out of it, so it'll be second and nine from the Christiansburg three. Hunter will deploy as a wide receiver to the near side. Again, it's a double tight end set with an H back. Back it comes, Clemens drops, looks, throws, long, wants to hit Hunter, it's up in the air, and knocked away at the last second on a nice play by Luke Goforth. The pass was intended for Hunter at about the Blacksburg 40, right on the numbers in front of the Blacksburg bench. Yeah, pretty good throwing ball there by Clemens, but great coverage by Ford, Goforth. He was step for step with MJ Hunter and uh, able to uh, bring up a big third down here. Third and nine from the Christiansburg three, and Blacksburg would love nothing more than to force a punt here. That punter would be very close to the end line if Blacksburg can get a stop here. And jumping early was Blacksburg, and that's going to make it a little bit easier for Christiansburg. Yeah, it's going to make the third down much more manageable here. It's going to bring up a third and four with a five-yard penalty there for jumping off sides. Looked like it was the hit man, Darius Norris, that left just a little bit early. He was, he was wanting to do some hitting. Let's you know, go down to our River Ridge Dermatology sideline reporter, Jake, and get an update on the field conditions and the weather outside. Jake, what's it like down there on the field? Third nine becomes third down, four yards to go. Thank you, Jake. Third and four going for the long pass along the Christiansburg sideline is Clemens, and it's picked off by Luke Goforth at the 35 of yep. Christiansburg. Great job there by number four, Goforth. He just sort of was hanging out over there, drifting. And as that ball drifted, it looked like Golson was, was on the strong coverage. And then the next thing you know, there comes Goforth in with the pick. The Blackbirds will take over with very good field position at the Christiansburg 35. Again, if you're listening tonight, we'd love to hear from you. Send us a text with your name and where you're listening from to 866-961-1430. 866-961-1430. First and 10, Blacksburg from the Christiansburg 45. 445, remaining before halftime, Blacksburg leading 7-0. Max Protect. Formation, Johnston back, wants to go long throwing. He has Coffee in the end zone, and Coffee has it for the touchdown from 35 yards out. What a great call and catch between Johnston and Coffee. How many times have we called that over the last three years, Brad? Johnston to Coffee. 35 yard touchdown pass. I tell you, Grant just threw it right up there and allowed Thomas just to run right underneath it. And Thomas was probably five yards behind the nearest. Blue Demon defender. So Sheeler will come on to try to make it 14 to nothing Blacksburg. 439 remaining before halftime. This is a good snap, a good hold, and a good kick. 439 remaining before halftime. Blacksburg stretches the lead in the centennial version of the Battle of the Bergs. 14 to nothing. You're listening to Bruins football on your local station, ESPN Blacksburg, along with Z101.3 and 105.9.
red zone offense is a bit problematic right now for Blacksburg. When they've got a lot of field to work with, this offense at times can be lethal. Sheena will kick it off from our right to left. Puts his left foot into it, a high end over end kick. It's going to drive the returner back, and it is going to go into the end zone as Herndon watches it. Drift into the end zone for the touchback. 439 remaining before halftime, 14 to nothing. Blacksburg leading. Trying to put the finishing touches on a 10-0 regular season, the top-ranked team in all of Class 4 statewide. They verged ahead of Lafayette in the rankings that came out on Wednesday. And Christiansburg hoping that Patrick Canley loses so they can make their way into the playoffs as well. Double tight end set, man in motion to the near side pitch, comes to the man in motion. That is Hunter trying to turn the corner, and he will not. He will be tackled by a slew of Bruins. What great team speed right there by the Bruins. I tell you, you got, you had Logan Hudson coming over. You had uh, Luke Goforth, uh, Tim Sawyers. I mean, that's a defensive tackle coming over on the edge right there to make that play. And if you're watching this game on the replay on WTOB, the Town of Blacksburg's public access channel, you can watch that on Mondays at 7, Wednesday at 3 o'clock, and Saturday at 10 a.m. Watch that particular play. It'll give you an indication of the team speed that Blacksburg has on defense. Again, it's a double tight end set. Clemens tries to run up the middle, and he will get nowhere. One on the carry, 54 on the tackle. Looks like Lucas again in on the tackle there by the Bruins. Give him another yard. Looked like it was just another quarterback ISO. I mean, he's just coming right up the middle. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. He's got that big body, big frame on him, and they're just trying to use him and pound it up in there. On that right side, they go 235 and 305. That time they ran it right up the middle behind Adam Caudle, their 5'6", 205 pound senior center. Hunter goes in motion far side. A little bit of a misdirection, and Clemens will have a little bit of yardage on that particular play. A well-designed play by Christiansburg. He will be bumped out at about, let's Number see, one, the 36, 37. Looks like Nathan Mathena coming up for the Bruins there to make that tackle. Hold the 37. It'll bring up fourth down for Christiansburg, and the punt team will come on again for the Blue Demons. Line of scrimmage is the 27. Hunter stands at about the 15. Mitchell, the lone returner for Blacksburg in the middle of the field, standing between the 40 and the 45 of Blacksburg. Waiting the snap is Henley, and we're going to have a timeout called by... I believe it's by the Bruins. I he did not give the signal yet as to who called the timeout. I think it's going to be us. Timeout called by Blacksburg. Well, Brad, 10 regular season wins. The only other time it's been done, 1976. You've got a senior on this team. What would that mean? to this community and this program? Well, uh, you know, I mean, that's just a remarkable thing for any team. Anytime that uh, you have the opportunity to go undefeated in a regular season in whatever sport it is, that means that you had to be perfect as a team all season long, and that's a hard thing to do. You know, it is obviously special having uh, two sons out there. You know, I have one that's a senior, Cole, and uh, uh, one that is a freshman, Parker, and being able to enjoy the, uh, the, the moments with them and for them to be able to enjoy the moments together uh, has been a remarkable thing to watch. Now, you know, there's still a lot of ball to be played yet, though, so you don't want to you don't want to get into that just yet. We'll talk about a little bit more about the fourth quarter. We will. We will. We hope. The good snap comes back. The punt gets away, and it's a, again, a wobbler. It's going to bounce in favor of Christiansburg. It'll be downed right in front of us at the 44 of Blacksburg. Great field position right here. Plenty of time on the clock, three minutes and 13 seconds here in the second quarter. A 29-yard punt by Henley. It'll be Golston and Muhammad to the right. It will be Coffey between the numbers and the sideline on the near side. Just inside of the numbers is Cordell Croy. Mitchell is in the backfield. Now Croy is going to shift and go over to the right side of the field. 
in between Muhammad and Golston. Mitchell's in the backfield to the left of Johnston. Back comes the snap. Here comes Christiansburg. Penalty flag down. Pass in the middle of the field. Tipped twice. Incomplete. The penalty flag is at the 45-yard line. There's another one across the field at the 46. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be an illegal procedure on uh, the Bruins. Yeah, formation penalty. Our spotter, Robbie Hudson, former official, says it's a formation penalty on Blacksburg. So the Bruins go five yards the wrong direction, and it'll be first and 15. 3.07 remaining before halftime, 14-0 Blacksburg leading. Yeah, you hate to have such good field position and then move yourself backwards. Uh, uh, we've got to be better at that as we move forward with the remainder of the season. Mitchell is to the right of the quarterback, Johnston, and about a yard behind him, triplets right, single receiver left, pass out in the flat to Muhammad, and it bounces off of his shoulder pads, incomplete. It looked like Brad Muhammad started to turn up field before he took care of the first order of business, and that's bring it in. Well, it goes back to sort of the old school methods of, of, of receiving. He tried to cradle the ball when it came to him, and it just hit the pads and bounced off. You know, they'll tell you, you got to get your hands up there, catch it with your hands, then you tuck it. And uh, um, that's a prime example why. Triplets right, Coffey the lone receiver to the left. Back comes the snap, decent protection this time. Johnston looking, now he's gonna take a head running and he's gonna have the first down and more all the way up to the Christiansburg 40, a game of 21 for Grant Johnston. Well, you don't see that very often out of Johnston, but he saw the lane right there and he got that big body moving and those long legs with the strides that he has and uh, and picked up major yardage there for the Bruins and is gonna move the chains. A Nest Realty first down for Blacksburg. They'll have it first and 10 at the Christiansburg 40. 2.45 remaining before halftime. Triplets right. Again, Coffey the lone receiver on the numbers to the left. Mitchell is in the slot on the left. Johnston with time. Throws over the middle. Has the receiver. It's Golston. And he's going to be brought down at about the 27. A gain of 13. Another tackle. Nest Realty first down. Looks like number six, Rally Williams, in on the tackle for the Blue Demons. And something you can't discount, Brad, is the fact that these last three games, by and large, number six has not been out there. Ty Quest Terry, he should be back for the first round playoff game. That will be a welcome addition back to this Bruins offense. Well, it definitely will. I mean, anytime you have a player like Ty Quest and he's not on the field, you know, uh, uh, that. He, that hurts you, but in the long run, it's going to help us because it's going to be able to provide more depth for us as we get into the playoffs. Johnston steps up, hits Mitchell in a crossing pattern. He's over the 15, he's over the 10, he's going to be dragged down at about the 9, a gain of 17 for the Bruins. Trevor Simpkins in on the tackle once again for the Blue Demons. I tell you, Simpkins showing some wheels right there to track down Mitchell. He had the angle, but he, he showed some wheels right there to track him down. So Blacksburg will have it. I'm not sure, Brad, with where they've spotted it, if that's first and goal or first and 10. I believe it's first and goal because the chains are nowhere near. So first and goal, Blacksburg, from 10 yards out. Twins, check that triplets to the left. Johnston wants to look for one of them. He loses one tackle. He's going to carry it forward, and Johnston is going to run it into the end zone for the touchdown from 10 yards out. Great job right there. Grant Johnston once again found that lane right up the middle. They were trying to, to basically contain the sides, and Johnson's able to see it and just finds the lane and, and, and takes those that big body of his and, and, and barrels it into the end zone for the touchdown for the Bruins. And listening tonight, Brad, is Sandy. Brian Mitchell's grandmother is listening in St. George, Utah. Wow, thank How you for about listening. That? Kick up. And it's Dawson Rasick with the extra point for the Bruins. Going to give the Bruins the lead here with two minutes and one second to go. Bruins 21, Christiansburg Blue Demon 0. You're listening to Blacksburg Bruins football on your local station, ESPN Blacksburg and Z101.3 and 105.9. My name is Kathy Baker and I have worked for Blacksburg Transit for a little over five and a half years. I myself is what might be termed an empty nester. Um, my children are, have moved out of the house, all gone off to college, uh, so it's a great opportunity for me to provide a second income in our household. It gives me something to do during the daytime. You know, BT is fairly flexible in terms of hours. 
uh, so that it's possible to kind of create your own schedule that will blend in with the other parts of, of one's life. Now, I just think that working at BT is a great job. I work with a great group of people. I really like my job. I, I like the, the ability to have the responsibility to take a bus out and be tasked with that responsibility and, and drive in a safe um, manner and uh, provide great customer service to our passengers. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Another long distance listener, Brad, is Blake Stanaland's grandmother listening to the game tonight in the Houston area. So we're truly able to call ourselves Bruin Nation tonight. Here is Chad Shield with a high end over end kick. It's going to be into the end zone off of the hands of Kyle Herndon, and that'll be a touchback. Good kick right there once again by three, Chaz Sheeler. Anytime you can keep them within the 20 yard line, you're doing well. Blacksburg really, throughout this entire season, has only given up one special teams play in which the kickoff team advanced it past the 37. That was the touchdown by E.J. Horton on the kickoff return at Pulaski County about four weeks ago. Triplets to the right, twins to the left, an empty backfield for Jake Clemens. He's going to run it straight ahead, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of about a yard, maybe two. Like Tim Sawyer's in on the tackle there. Clock under two minutes. 145 and ticking. Blacksburg leading 21 to nothing on senior night. Three different seniors have a touchdown. Drew Babcock. Thomas Coffey, and a rushing touchdown by Grant Johnston, 21-0. Blacksburg with the lead, again, triplets right. Twins to the left in motion to the near side was, can't tell if that was Herndon or Hunter. Looked like it was Hunter, Hunter. in on that. Uh, looked like Donald Norris in on the tackle there for the Bruins. Mark, want to give a little shout out to a former Blacksburg Indian that listens to us every night, Eric Wade. Uh, we appreciate you listening, Eric. And a lot of folks may not have gotten the memo, Brad, that this game got moved from Friday night to Thursday night. We may have some people tuning in tomorrow night saying, where's Blacksburg? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it was a little different, but uh, I guess they had to do what they had to do. Um, I was thinking as I was driving back from D.C. this afternoon, we literally have had in the Commonwealth of Virginia a high school football game on every day of the week this year. The championship games last year, remember because of the snow, were played on Sunday. Right. We've had games on Fridays, Saturdays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I don't think I've ever seen a high school football season where the weather has played so much havoc with the regularly scheduled games. Well, you know the interesting thing is, I mean, um, and I don't understand it quite honestly, I guess it's just the change of the times. I can remember when I played, we played in all weather conditions. The only time that we didn't play was when it was lightning. We're gonna go old school here. <laughs> it's just true. Old school. I mean, it's true. That was just the way it was. You're you, right, you, you're you, right. You played, and uh, um, the only thing that kept you off the field was lightning. Third and six for Christiansburg. From their own 24, triplets right, twins to the left. Clemens started to his left, then went back to his right, and he's going to be brought down for no game whatsoever. And Blacksburg is going to get the ball back. It's fourth and six. And that's plenty of time, a minute nine seconds remaining before halftime. And we do have an injured player. It looks like, no, he bounces right back up for a moment. Xavier it Wright. was Xavier Wright, but he pops right back up, which is a good sign. I can remember, um, you know, Coach Lawson, I was talking about it the other day when uh, in, in 1989, the state championship team, we played at Salem Stadium and we had had a huge snow and it, it had snowed so much that they pushed the fields off and the snow piles was above where the walls were at the stadium. Uh, it was unbelievable. Robbie's shaking his head, smiling. He remembers it. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember playing the first year down at Salem Stadium in 85 as a sophomore, and it was pouring down rain. It was a flood 85 weekend, and just water just rolling off. Of rolling off of yeah, yeah. Wow. Ah, we could reminisce for so long, couldn't we? We could. We could, absolutely. <laughs> People at home are saying, well, you guys just call the game. <laughs> Fourth and six for 
The Christiansburg Blue Demons, Henley will drop back to punt. Recall that one snap went over his head already in this game. Brian Mitchell is standing between the 45 and the 50 of Blacksburg right on the distinctive letter B painted in the middle of the field. The snap is back. It's a good snap. The kick is away. It's towards the Christiansburg sideline. Looks like they may have kicked it purposely to keep it away from Brian Mitchell. It's going to roll out of bounds at the 34-yard line of Blacksburg, and Blacksburg will have an even 60 seconds with which to do something with it. Got plenty of time. We'll see exactly what happens here. You know, hopefully Coach Johnson's got something uh, up his sleeve. Scoreboard shows that Blacksburg has zero timeouts remaining. In the first half, they hit first. Yeah, they're out. They, they, they burn them, you know, when the defense would stop, they was burning them at that point. So Blacksburg may have to rely on some quick sideline routes. They put three receivers left. Twins to the right, including Mitchell, who lines up in the slot. Johnston with a check of the wristband. Back comes the snap. Johnston's going to roll to his left. He's got plenty of room. Now he throws, has his receiver, Logan Hudson, over the midfield stripe, over the 45, and knocked down on a punishing tackle. And that may be a targeting call. It was Connor Brizendine who slammed Logan Hudson to the turf, and Logan's got his right hand up on his breastplate. But let's see what's going to happen with this particular call. Well, you know, the, the thing was is – I mean, it, it was a pretty good shot right there. Logan had sort of stopped his momentum. He It looked like he was trying to slow down the cut. And uh, and the I Bruins are actually walking back. Are they going to somehow call this on Blacksburg? We got a flag at the 24-yard line. There's a flag back at the 24-yard line. Maybe this is going to be a hold before the hit occurred. Let's see what the call is. There's no question it's going to be against Blacksburg. The Bruins have gone backwards. Against the Bruins. That's unfortunate. Ten yards, the foul. It was a 10-yard mark-off from where the flag was located. So for Blacksburg, it's going to be first. And let's see where the officials are going to mark it. They have not put the ball down yet. They're going to mark it from the 24. They're marking it from the 24. That's going to go all the way back to the 14. Blacksburg's going to have a first and 30. I, I, I don't know exactly what happened there. It must have been a hold at the 24. Was it a hold, Robbie? Yes. It was. Our spotter, Robbie Hudson, says it was a hold. So Blacksburg has it first and 30. 42 seconds remaining. Johnston throws it into the flat to Muhammad. He's up over the 30, 35. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. It's a foot race, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds. Like I say, he stepped out of bounds at the 45 of Christiansburg. Muhammad showing his wheels right there. A 40-yard catch and run by Kareem Muhammad. Number 11, Caleb Henley coming over to push him out of bounds. Gets a nice hug from Logan Hudson, saying, well done, Kareem. It was well done. So it's a nest realty first down for Blacksburg. The ball on the near side hash mark. Bruins look to the side to get the play call from offensive coordinator Chad Johnston, who's up in the press box on the other side from where we are broadcasting. There'll be three receivers in the boundary, the short side of the field. Coffey to the far side, just beyond the hash mark. Mitchell in the backfield, play action. Johnston rolling to his right, has room to go. Stops, wants to go long, going deep into the end zone, and is there going to be a penalty flag? There is not. Wow, I, I can't believe there wasn't a penalty flag on that. I mean, that's the furthest away from us, but it really looked like there was a lot of hand shuffling going on right there. It was about a 50-yard pass, maybe 45-yard pass in the air on the run from Grant Johnston, who has got one heck of an arm. Great, great, great look right there for John. Johnson put it where he needed to. The good thing is the clock stops, 22 seconds remaining, and if you're Blacksburg, well, you'd love to get six, but you'd certainly like to get into field goal range to maybe see if whether Chaz Sheeler or Dawson Racic could get points on the board for Blacksburg. Yeah, you definitely like to get something going there, but we're going to have to hustle. The play clock's down to eight seconds. Three receivers right, single receiver left. The officials stop the clock. 
It is a timeout called by Christiansburg. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout as well. You're listening to Bruins Football on your local station, ESPN Blacksburg, 21-0 Bruins. Twenty-two seconds remaining before halftime. Twenty-one nothing. Blacksburg with the lead. They have the ball on the 45-yard line of Christiansburg. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. Johnston will be alone in the backfield, standing at about the 49 of Christiansburg. He takes a straight drop, steps up in the pocket, fires long, has coffee, and sent it about two yards over his head. Just a little bit too much air under that one from Grant. So 16 seconds remaining third and ten for Blacksburg and Coffee was wide open. He was. He was able to get behind the defensive backfield of uh, the Blue Demons but uh, Grant showing off his arm just a little bit strong right there. All the players looking at the sideline to get the play call. Looking at the wristbands it is Hudson, Croy and Muhammad to the far side Coffee and Mitchell to the near side. Johnston back, avoids a tackler, has room to run. He's over the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. He slides down at the 20. And only nine seconds left. Blackstar's going to have to get up to the line of scrimmage and spike the ball. And that has to be a direct exchange between the quarterback and the center. So Johnston rarely under center. He's just going to get the snap and slam it into the turf, we think. Officials waiting to start the clock. Now he does. Snap back. Johnston does just that. Takes a knee to stop the clock. Eight seconds remaining. And let's see if the three-point unit is coming on here or if Blacksburg will maybe try a quick pass into the end zone. Looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field. Eight seconds remaining. Well, you can maybe get off a quick play, but if it's a completed pass and... The receiver does not get into the end zone. Blacksburg's not going to get anything out of this. So the Bruins will have to be careful with the play call. It will be twin receivers on either side of the line of scrimmage. And the officials are going to stop the clock. Another Christiansburg timeout. So, Brad, you look at strategy here. You've got eight seconds left. You can maybe get off a of play, maybe a quick sideline pass, and maybe five, six seconds, something like that. If you do something into the end zone, it's going to gobble up another second or two. So, Blacksburg has to be careful here. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, eight seconds, I mean, it's a short amount of time when you're trying to run, you know, 20 yards down the field. We'll see exactly. I, you know, I'm not. A, I, I don't know uh, if I would bring my offense back out or just go on and kick the ball. But uh, that's if, why I'm on the radio booth and they're coaching. And if I'm Grant Johnston, if my receivers are covered, I'm not going to take off and try to run. I'm going to maybe take two steps up and just chuck it and try to get that clock stopped so either Rasick or Sheeler can get out on the field and try for three. Right. Right. Absolutely. It will be Coffee and Muhammad to the near side. Cordell Croy. And Logan Hudson to the far side. Bubby Cole into the game at running back. Back comes the snap, and the officials stop the clock. And I think Alex Wilkins wanted to see what Blacksburg was going to line up in, and he calls another timeout. Hey, I had a couple things I needed to, to, to bring up. Uh, the first one was I didn't get a chance last the last homecoming game 
to announce who the homecoming queen was. And I talked to her the other day, and I told her that I would I would do that. Uh, her name is Carly Simmers, so I wanted to say congratulations to Carly Simmers. Um, the other thing is, is uh, there was a former Bruin when I first got into radio that played here at Blacksburg. Uh, um, and I tell you what, just an unbelievable player. C.J. Linkus played with a high motor, played aggressive. And, and I saw to uh, this week that he graduated from the Law Enforcement Academy. Good for him. Um, and so I wanted to give a shout-out to C.J. and, and uh, his commitment. And uh, uh, we appreciate uh, his commitment to the service. And I tell you, if, if C.J. is a police officer the way that he played football, he's going to be a great police officer for somebody. So here we go, eight seconds left, twin receivers on either side. Johnston, straight drop, wants to go into the end zone, has a receiver open, Logan Hudson hauls it in for the touchdown with three seconds left. Wow, what a great play call there by Coach Johnston. I told you that's why we're in the radio booth and he's in, he's in the coach's booth, you know? Wide open, wow. Wide open was Logan Hudson and he hauls in the touchdown and the fourth Bruin senior of the night on senior night here at Bill Brown Stadium. Hauls it in, 27-0 Blacksburg, and it is Dawson Racing that will come on to try the PAT from the right side. He is a right-footed kicker. Chaz Sheeler, a left-footed kicker. That kick is up in the air, and that kick is good. So, senior Dawson Racing puts Blacksburg ahead, 28-0 with three seconds remaining. And we'll just keep it right here since we're so close to halftime. So, Brad, this score looking a little bit more now like we thought or like we hoped as Blacksburg partisans that it would be. Well, you know, I tell you the thing that's impressive to me is is the fact that our offense is starting to click a little bit. You know, we struggled a little bit the past few games, just to hadn't played real well offensively. Um, but uh, uh, tonight uh, we're, we're starting to click again. And, you know, it, it's sort of like March Madness. Um, you know, the, the team that is hot at the time is the one that, that generally goes the furthest. And so that's what you want to be. You want to start start increasing your output uh, right as, as the playoff times come because at the end of the day, the seedings that we get after this game and after the games tomorrow, that's that's it. It doesn't matter because it's, 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 it's one and done. Win or go home uh, so, time. So, you know, the, you throw the seedings out at that point in rankings. And uh, um, so you got to get hot and stay hot. We know that all so well with the state championship run two years ago. Nobody would have thought that we would have won the state championship, but we got hot at the right time. And Grant Johnston hit Logan Thomas. How about that? Logan Thomas comes out of retirement. I'm giving you a hard time. It's Logan Hudson. <laughs> hey, we would. Well, take, he's we, a Virginia Tech student. We, what do you expect? We would take Logan Logan Thomas, though. You know, if the if the Bills would uh, allow him to to come here one day, we would. We would definitely take him, but well, Brookville probably would take offense. If, they might. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Logan Hudson looked pretty much like Logan Thomas right there on that play. So, here is a snap back and flags fly. There was movement up front. Looked like Clemens was just going to attempt a quarterback run, but the infraction is on Christiansburg, and with two seconds left, you know, before halftime. It'll be first and 15. Sorry, Brad. No, that's okay. The, the thing that, that we, we also got to look at, and if the game continues in this fashion, one, you got to look at making sure we don't get anyone injured. Uh, the other part is that sometimes in rivalry games, frustrations take place, and there's some chippiness, and we don't want to do anything that uh, is going to affect who plays next week. So uh, we've got to be smart. Clemens just runs it straight ahead. He looked like he managed to break free for a moment, but the officials said he had been stopped, and that is the way the first half will come to a close. Blacksburg will go into the locker room in the 100th playing of the Battle of the Birds with a 28-2-0 lead. We will be back with the Blacksburg. Check that. We will be back with our halftime show, sponsored by how many years we've been doing this now? Total Motion Physical Therapy, duh. When we return on ESPN Blacksburg. Who are you? What do you serve? What do you believe in? This is Blacksburg, Virginia, the home of Virginia Tech. 
a small yet growing community nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Here, you'll find all walks of life, college students, new families, people who just want a quiet place to retire. Summers are adventurous. Falls are filled with the buzz of college football. Winters bring a quiet beauty, and springtime is beautiful beyond belief. It's a special place to live. But this town also plays host to another kind of person, a group of professionals who serve in ways you could never imagine. Meet the Blacksburg Police Department. This department values close relationships, family, integrity, and training. If you qualify to join these ranks, you'll be trained for success. You'll grow in personal confidence. You'll truly enjoy coming to work every day. Blacksburg permits a different level of community involvement. Why? Because residents here respect and care about their police force. So this police force is able to truly help those in the community who are in need. You'll be helping our population get home safely after a night out giving life lessons to those who made an honest mistake, protecting our young ones from harm's way, helping to solve problems during the big games, the festivals, and parades. Serving on this police force is not just working in another job. This is an opportunity to fundamentally shift the lives of others toward positive results. You'll become the rational voice of reason for people when things are going poorly for them. You'll be the leader to guide others to see a better light. You'll be the one who knows the way and you'll show the way. You are the one who does the right thing when no one is watching. Obviously, serving on this police force is not a job for just anyone. It goes back to these basic questions. Who are you? What do you serve? What do you believe in? We welcome the select few who are drawn toward a higher calling to serve. Is that you? Do you qualify? Are you curious enough to find out? This is your opportunity to consider joining one of the country's finest police departments. As we begin the third quarter of play, Chaz Sheeler has it teed up at the 40-yard line. He will kick from our right to our left, and he put his last kickoff into the end zone on the fly. Let's see if he can do it again. And he just may have, and that is back halfway into the end zone where it is caught by Kyle Herndon. So terrific kickoffs tonight by Chaz Sheeler. Yeah, great strong foot right there. Showing his stuff. That's gonna be so valuable in the playoffs when you take away some of those special teams weapons that Blacksburg will be facing in the playoffs. If he can do that repeatedly in the playoffs, that helps Blacksburg a lot. Well, the thing is, is it's not just Chaz. I mean, it, it, it's Dawson Rasick. I mean, the kid, that kid's got a strong leg. He's done well. You got Luke Goforth, I mean, We've got, some, we've got some special teams weapons. Twins to either side, a single running back going in motion to the far side is Henley. He gets it on the sweep and he's able to get to the edge and he will pick up 11 yards for a first down. I tell you, I said it earlier in the uh, in the in the broadcast. Um, I, I I feel like the Henley kid is probably the best athlete on Christiansburg's team, and uh, he's sort of showing it again. Not a big player, 5'9", 155, but he's got a set of wheels. Twin receivers on either side. It is. Kyle Herndon in the backfield, coming in motion again to the near side. This time is Henley, and the quarterback Clemens is going to have to race to his sideline and we'll have a penalty flag. It looks like it's going to be a late hit out of bounds on Blacksburg. That looked like it was Epperly in on the tackle there. I, I, uh, I don't see that flag right there. Maybe they're just trying to keep things from motions from going, but I mean, he is, wasn't like he tackled him. He just put his hands on him. Uh, that's a, I, I don't agree with that one. There was nothing vicious at all about that particular hit, but the officials thought it was late in coming. 
Well, that's unfortunate. That'll be a 15 yard penalty. There is the personal foul signal. Here comes the walk off and the ball will be placed at the 42 or three. I'm not sure where the official is going to set it. He's going to set it at the 43-yard line on the far side hash mark, and that's where Christiansburg will have it first and 10. 28 to nothing. Blacksburg just underway in the third quarter. Christiansburg moving from our left to right. There's again Herndon in the backfield. Twin receivers to either side in motion. Comes Caleb Henley. Cuts it up inside, and he's going to be brought down for a gain of about... Two. Number 11, Henley. Nine on the tackle. Looks like Tim Sawyer's in on the tackle there for the Bruins. Takes the ball. Two yards. Nine Sawyer's in the wall and Norris on the Ball's about two yards beyond eight the near side hash. Second down, eight Second down and eight from the 45. The nose of the football just touching the 45-yard line. Twin receivers on either side. It is again Herndon in the backfield. Going in motion to the far side is Henley. Play action to him. And this ball is going to be intercepted by Blacksburg's Luke Goforth at the 30. He's dragging the receiver that was intended for the pass. He's brought down at the 31-yard line. That was a pass where the quarterback, Clemens, just threw that one up in the air for a jump ball type play. And that ball seemed to stay up in the air for a long, long time. Goforth picks it off. Looked like the pressure was coming from the hitman Norris. Darius was getting some pressure on Clemens, and uh, there's go for it, Johnny, on the spot one more time to bring in his second interception. And we do not see Brian Mitchell in the backfield. Maybe our Rear Ridge Dermatology sideline reporter, Jake Lyman, can tell us what's the story with Mr. Mitchell. Play action, Johnston going long, going deep, has his receiver, and it's a diving catch made by Drew Babcock at about the 22-yard line. Great toss and catch there once again by Johnston to Babcock. That's almost like a law firm right there, Johnston and Babcock. A 50-yard catch on the long throw by Grant Johnston, senior connecting with senior. What a great looking play that was. A Nest Realty first down for Blacksburg. They'll put triplets to the far side. Coffee to the near side, play action to Cole. Johnston in the backfield trying to avoid the rushers and he's just gonna throw this one away along the side and there is a penalty flag that comes in. The ball was thrown beyond the Blacksburg sideline. Coffee went up to catch it and he took a shot well out of bounds. And, we got multiple and I think we now. may have a penalty there. Let's see if there was also an ineligible player downfield for Blacksburg. I, that might be a makeup call from the last one. The officials are talking it through, standing between the Blacksburg 25 and 30. What you Wes McCoy standing beside them, trying to get the play play. call. Going to be a dead ball personal foul against Christiansburg, so that will be due to the late hit out of bounds. That, um, I'll be honest with you, you know, I complained about the, the, the late hit on us over on their sideline. I, I would be complaining about that as well if I was a Christiansburg person. Uh, you know, the young man was going for the ball. It wasn't like he was trying to, to, to rough rough them up or anything along those lines. I, uh, um, I, I guess I guess at the end of the day, the officials understand it's a rivalry game and they're gonna call a little bit tighter just to make sure they're not gonna get out of hand. I saw the teams when they were going back into the locker rooms, the referees was going down the middle of the field to try to keep them somewhat separated because there was a little bit of talk going back and forth. It's also a roughing the passer call yeah, we got two penalties. One's a on Christiansburg. So that's going to be a 15-yard gain. That's going to be two half I'm sorry. To the goal. It's going to be two half the distance to the goal. Two half the distances from the goal from the 27. So 
So the first one will get marked off for 13. The second one will get marked off for 6 or 7. It's going to be a half the distance well, to the Golden Fraction. So the Black Bruins are going to have the ball inside the 10. It's going to be spotted just inside of the 5-yard line. So first and goal, Blacksburg from the 5. The ball's right in the middle of the field. Three receivers to the left are Babcock, Croy, and Muhammad. Coffee to the far side of the field on the numbers. Bubby Cole is to the right of the quarterback, Johnston, who looks down at his wristband. Now the official signal play can begin. And off to Cole, has a hole, and he is close, but not quite in. He's down to the one-yard line. A nice hole opened up by Blacksburg's offensive line. Yeah, good vision there by Bubby Cole as well, finding that hole. I tell you what, it wouldn't do me any, any more better than to see Bubby Cole score a touchdown here tonight. I mean, he's a senior. He's really played uh, uh, played hard the past four years here at Blacksburg High School, and uh, nobody any more deserving than, than Bubby Cole. They will mark it at the two, so second and goal from the two. Another carry by Bubby Cole. Does he get into the end zone? He fumbled the ball as he went in, but the official says he had control of it before he went into the end zone and after. So it is a touchdown for Blacksburg. John Bubby Cole, how about that? That is great stuff right there. That uh, you, you see how, how much this team loves John Cole. Uh, you know, the fans, he's a fan favorite, he's a team favorite, and uh, not a lot to not like about John Bubby Cole. What a great young man he is, and uh, uh, love to see him get the pay dirt there for the Bruins. And yet another senior scores a touchdown. That's five different seniors that have scored the five touchdowns tonight. How fitting is that on senior night? Here is Sheeler with the PAT attempt. It is up and it is good. And with 10.06 remaining in the third quarter, Blacksburg stretches the lead to 35 to nothing. You're listening to Blacksburg Bruins football on your local station, ESPN Blacksburg and Z101.3 and 105.9. I drive because the hours are flexible. I drive because the money is great. I drive for BT, you can too. Blacksburg stretching its lead out 35 to nothing and you start to get the sense now Brad I don't know if Christiansburg has a 36 point comeback in them tonight it's beginning to look I don't want to say a lot like Christmas it's beginning to look a lot like 10 and 0 but there is still plenty of time to play in this game 10 3 remaining Sheeler Puts his left foot into it. This is a high kick end over end. It's going to be caught at about the 10 yard line. Brought up field by number 28. That is Kyle Herndon. And he's going to be swarmed down at about the 28 yard line. And Brad with 35 points. We're now in the running clock situation. So the clock is spinning. I think that uh, probably it won't be long. You'll, you'll start seeing uh, uh, some of the uh, Younger players, some in the of the game. pumps. Yep. You got to think now if you're Blacksburg, this game appears to be in hand. You just don't want anyone injured. You don't want to lose a player with the playoffs starting next week. Jake Clemens is back, rolling to his right, spots an open receiver over the middle. That is Simpkins. And are they going to say that that ball was, no, that was Widrig? They're going to say that ball was incomplete. They are. Looked like Widrig had it for a moment, then it popped loose. And they'll call it incomplete. Looked like Babcock in on the uh, contact there to knock the ball loose. Second and ten. And usually the clock would stop on an incomplete pass, but because of the quote-unquote mercy rule, Blacksburg leading by 35, that clock will spin, except for very limited situations. Twins on either side for Christiansburg. Single running back in the backfield. There was movement up front, and the officials halt the play. Let's see if Blacksburg jumped early or if Christiansburg moved early. I think that's against, I think that's against us, I believe. Looked like uh, uh, Norris jumping just a little bit quick. Didn't know if he was drawn off or not. 
but the official said he wasn't. So it's second and five from the 33-yard line. Far side hash mark. Again, twins to either side for Christiansburg. Here comes a blitz by Epperly. The pass is complete. A very well-thrown ball by Clemens right at the first down marker along the Christiansburg sideline. Let's see where they spotted. They're going to move the chain, so it's a first down for Christiansburg. Golson in on the tackle there for the Bruins. Uh, I tell you, Epperly timed that one up just right. Uh, Clemens did a good job to get that ball away. He's across the I got to say, Brad, I thought the equipment rules came out this year and every, everyone had to wear white socks. I see that Epperly kid out there with those gray ones he used to wear. <laughs> Clemens airmails it way over the head of his intended receiver, Tristan Widrig, right on the numbers at about the 40 yard line. That's going to make it. Second and ten. Yeah, I, I sort of like the white. Uh, he does have white socks on. It just looks like it's the gray leggings. Uh, I see some blue leggings out there and some different ones. Uh, I, I'm sort of partial to white as well, but uh, he, he is what he is. He, he wears whatever he wears. Twins to the left, triplets to the right. Quick pass to Herndon, and he started to run upfield before he brought the ball in, and Clemens took a shot from Epperly. It will be third and 10. We're gonna have a roughing the passer call. I, I, I don't that know. makes no sense to me whatsoever. No, no, not at all. Received, the quarterback rather had just barely gotten rid of the ball when Epperly arrived. But the officials well, have the opinion that counts. That's it. That's exactly right. And uh, so that's all that matters. So twin receivers for Christiansburg on either side. They have a single running back. Snap back. Clemens rolling to his right. Under pressure. Gets the pass away. Unable to bring it in was the intended receiver. Right about the 45-yard line along the Bruins sideline, that was Tristan Widry, the 6'3", 205-pound senior. Babcock Epperly uh, in coverage there. Christiansburg has some nice athletes, Brad. You can see there's some athleticism out there. They just don't have quite enough of them yet, but you can sort of get the sense in this game that Alex Wilkins' system is starting to take hold, that they're making progress. Well, you, you have to you have to give it to Alex Wilkins and his coaching staff. Um, the uh, the thing that you look at is, is, is – uh oh, there goes down the Henley field. on the quick pitch was able to get around the edge, and he's going to be out of bounds at the 28 yard line. That's a pickup of 19. The, the thing that you look at, you know, they're improving. Um, the last year they didn't win any games, but he had those kids working out, uh, you know, working in the weight room, doing other things, and uh, there was a lot of energy. That says a lot about his coaching style and, and how the kids respect him. And they've improved. You know, they, they're on the verge of, of being able to make the playoffs this year. Here is a fake of a pitch to the man in motion to the near side. That was Henley that was in motion, and Clemens faked it to him, went into the line, and he'll have a game of about – what are going to call that? Looks Brad, like about, about four. four. Yeah, it looks like about four. Looked like Epperly as well. Sawyer's in on the tackle there for the Bruins. Twin receivers to either side. Herndon is to the right of his quarterback. Snap comes back. Clemens rolling to his right. Rolling. Gets a nice block. Gets it to his receiver who stepped out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. If he doesn't step out right there, Connor Brizendine has some room to run down the Bruins sideline. It's flagged down. I believe it's going to come back for a hold. The flag is lying at the 26-yard line, about a yard or so inside of the near side hash. And that's the signal holding on Christiansburg. So the ball will be spotted. Looks like at about the 36-yard line. Mark it off, and that's where he puts it, at the 36 on the near side hash. Well, you have to think this is going to be four down territory here for the for the Blue Demons. It's going to bring up second and 23. 
Uh, I don't believe it's 23, actually. Uh, 18 yards, dude. Looks like it's about 18. 18, yeah. Here's a fake of a pitch to Hunter. No, he does have it, and he is brought down for a big loss. And Great. Sawyer drops him beyond the 40. Great job right there. I tell you what, that, that's that defense just working together. Tim Sawyers was over there. Everly had came, and, and MJ tried to, MJ Hunter tried to stop. And when he stopped, that's when Tim Sawyers came through and just cleaned it up. That's a loss of five. Making it third. Scoreboard says 22. I think it's a little bit longer than that, Brad. I, I believe it could be. Third and a lot for Christiansburg. Twin receivers on either side. Clemens runs it straight ahead, and he's going to get across the 40 to the 39. So a gain of just two. Tim Sawyers again having a good night here for the Bruins and on the tackle. Going to bring up fourth and 19 here for the Blue Demons. And about 20 yards to go. And Christiansburg will not bring the punter on the field. At least they're not showing it yet. Looks like the offense will stay on the field. Fans, Blue Demon offense still on the field. Blacksburg defense out there. Let's show some support. Will be twin receivers Bruins. on either side. Getting set is Widry on the near side. Step back, Clemens straight drop. Has some time, wants to go deep. Airs it out. Has a receiver deep, but it was over his head, almost intercepted by Golston near the pylon on the near side. And Blacksburg will take over at the 39. Two, 57 remaining in the third quarter. The clock will stop on a change of possession under the mercy rule. Looks like coach is going to give, leave most of the players in here through the third quarter. It does look like Luke Goforth will be yes. into the game at quarterback. Grant Johnston's night appears to be over. So we will see what number four can do at the quarterback position. Twin receivers on either side. Cole is in the backfield with number four. He throws it out to Kareem Muhammad, leads him very, very nicely, and Muhammad's going to be up close to a first down. Looks like he'll be about a yard short. A nice pass thrown by Luke Goforth. Yeah, good job just to float it right out there to Muhammad. Good touch on the ball. Uh, good pickup of about nine yards for Muhammad. They'll give him eight. Looks like it's closer really to nine if you see where the first down marker is across the way. If it's two, it's a very short two for Blacksburg. Second and two from the 47. The ball's on the near side hash mark. Chaz Sheeter will be in the game now at receiver. Coffee and Croy to the far side. Golston and Sheeler to the near side. Snap is back. Cole gets the handoff. Heading forward, and he's brought tier. down on a nice tackle six on by tackle. number six, yeah, Riley yeah, Williams yeah, for yeah, Christiansburg. Good open field tackle there by, by Williams, uh, just coming up and uh, staying low, making a good tackle uh, against Bubby Cole. Third and two for the Bruins, 134 remaining on the third quarter clock as it continues to spin. And Blacksburg will be in no hurry to get these plays in. Right now, the clock is Blacksburg's best friend. They lead Christiansburg 35 to nothing. Three receivers right, single receiver left is Coffee. Back comes the snap, go forth, rolling to his right, has some room, stops, looking. Now he's going to take off, and he's going to be brought down at about the 48-yard line after a gain of one. It's going to be a little bit shy of the first down marker there. He's going to bring up fourth and uh, about one. And the punt team will come on for Blacksburg. And that was just simply a coverage play, Brad, where there was nobody open downfield. Luke had time if he'd had an open receiver, but there was nobody that he could get the ball to without risking it. And he did the smart thing, yeah, taking off and running with it. And just comes up a yard short. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to make something happen with his arm, probably if, if he would have been able to just, just tuck it and gone, uh, he probably would have been able to pick up the first down right there. But he was trying to make something happen with his arm there. Go forth gets the punt away. It's a very high kick. 
It's going to land at about the 35, and Blacksburg will down it at the, check that, at the 25. Blacksburg will down it at the 23-yard line. So a 25-yard punt for Luke. Seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. We'll do an offense. Comes out. Well, defense coming out on the field, seven seconds to go here in the third quarter. I, I, I think that you're probably going to start seeing some uh, younger kids coming in here, get a little bit of experience, help them get a little bit of depth. Good to see that Brian Mitchell was on the field for that particular play, so that ankle that maybe they were keeping him out of the running back position, he was on the field for the punt, so that's good to see. And we're seeing... The clock hit zeros for the third quarter. Blacksburg will take a 35-0 lead into the fourth quarter of the 100th meeting of the Battle of the Bird. You're listening to Blacksburg Bruins football on your local station ESPN Blacksburg and Z101.3 and 105.9. First and ten for Christiansburg, and the quarterback, Hunter. That's right, quarterback, Hunter, sweeps it around the left end for a gain of about six yards. And it was M.J. Hunter that started the season at quarterback, played the majority of the early part of the season, and then they sort of started toggling back and forth between Clemens and Hunter. And two games ago, they each played a quarterback. When they got their shutout, Last week it was Clemens who went the distance, and now it's Hunter into the game at quarterback. Yeah, I mean he's pretty versatile. He can he can play about any position out there. A great athlete, fine young man. He takes the snap back, rolling to his left, still rolling, wants to throw, has his receiver a nice pass thrown up at the 40. That's complete to Tristan Widrig. And that's going to be a first down. Chad Sheeler in on the tackle there, but not before they're able to pick up a first down. So you've got MJ Hunter, a sophomore. You've got Clemens, a junior. You can really use either one of them in the backfield. This Christiansburg program, Brad, it's on the up. They've had, they hit rock bottom last year, but they're on the way up. Absolutely. I mean, they've got some good-looking uh, athletes uh, coming up through their program. Uh, they're they're uh, the roughing the passer. And they're going to be a – there will be a roughing the passer penalty on Blacksburg. Flag was back at the 20. And that is something Blacksburg throughout the season, Brad, is going to have to work on when they get into the playoffs is the penalty bug has at times been not so good for Blacksburg. Yeah, but I, I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm probably going to speak out of turn here, but I'm as critical as anybody of them when they do something wrong because I think they need to be better. But I also think that some of these calls are a little bit uncalled for. I, I don't think that they're justified. Here's Blacksburg rushing, Hunter out of the pocket. He slings it and trying to make a diving interception attempt along the sideline was Drew Babcock. He couldn't quite haul it in. 10.30 remaining in the fourth quarter. The running clock, 35, nothing Blacksburg leading. They are on their way to completing just the second 10-0 regular season in school history. 
Three receivers left, single receiver right. Hunter rolling to his left, cuts it up inside. He'll be brought down after a gain of maybe half a yard. Looks like the hitman Norris, Darius Norris, as well as number nine, Tim Sawyer's in on the tackle there. And Hunter getting some help with his helmet by one of the Bruins. That's good sportsmanship. That's, that's great sportsmanship. That's Epperly right there. I, that's the, I, I got I to gotta give him a shout out right there. Well, when you have a rivalry like this, these two teams are obviously each other's biggest rival. When you see something like that, you feel pretty good about the youth that we have in Montgomery County. Here's Hunter rolling to his right. He's in trouble, being chased by Lucas. Lucas has him by the jersey and slings him down at the 41 of Christiansburg. Great job there by Jacob Lucas coming in. I tell you what, Jacob's had a good game tonight on this defensive side. Uh, He's had a couple sacks, uh, probably three or four for a loss. Um, oh, great man. job there by 54, Jacob Lucas. A 12-yard tackle for a loss, and Christiansburg will decide to punt it away. And it'll be Chaz Sheeler, who initially comes out for the punt attempt. Instead, coming out for Blacksburg will be Malcolm Collins, the freshman. He will call for the fair catch at the 26-yard line. Looks like we got some young ones coming in there now. Levi Linkus, uh, the senior, coming in. Uh, 77, Will Thomas. Uh, 25, Luke Elliott. Number 12, Parker Epperly. And Grandma Stanaland listening down in Houston. Blake is in the game. Blake Stanaland, Ryan Castle. Luke Goforth, the quarterback. But be Cole, the running back, to his right. Three receivers right, single receiver left. Quick pass out in the flat. That is caught by Blacksburg. Four to 12. Parker Everly on the reception. That's what I thought. I was saying to myself, wait a minute. Is that not? I got to double check. Is that 12? It was Parker Everly. Across the Good to see him out there getting a little bit of look. Uh, out in a little bit of a different position than what he's used to, but uh, sort of trying to use his skill set where, uh, where it best will help the team right now. He's one of three receivers on the near side. Single receiver on the far side is Staniland. Back comes the snap, go forth, throws it, fires it, complete to Logan Hudson, and the ball bounces around, and it's caught out of the air by Christiansburg. That's going to be... Well, it'll go down in the scoreboard on the scorebook as an interception, but that was a pass that was hauled in and then it bounced off of Blacksburg right into the hands of Christiansburg. Yeah, it looked like uh, looked like Hudson had it, and uh, all of a sudden it just sort of bounced up and, and came out. 7:45 remaining in the game on the turnover. The clock will stop. Blacksburg leading 35 to nothing. Got some new players in here on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, looks like Elliott and uh, Parker Epperly. Uh, Luke Elliott, Parker Epperly in at the inside backer position. Uh, 86. John Gerald's in. Number 64. Will Thomas is in as well. Penalty flags fly. Floyd Clyburn is in. One of the things we will do, Brad, we've done this every year that we've done Blacksburg football together. The very last game of the year, we'll have our senior statement segment where each senior will record a brief recording. I recorded most of those this week. And I just want to tell everybody, you're going to want to listen to the one from Floyd. That's great, that's great. Three receivers right, single receiver left. Here comes the handoff to number 31. That is Maston Stanley. We thought he might get a couple of carries in the game. He does there. And he'll have it down to the 40, it's like a 43 yard line. Yeah, looked like Parker Everly. Looked like Parker Everly in on the tackle there for the Bruins. Three receivers right, single receiver left. Back comes the snap to the quarterback, Hunter. Again, it goes to Stanley, and he is brought down at about the 40. Once again, Parker Epperly in on the tackle there, just, just taking his uh, feet out from underneath him. Same formation, three receivers right, a single receiver left. 
Hunter, the quarterback, gets the snap, hands it off again to Stanley. Stanley goes straight ahead, keeps his legs going, and grinds his way for a first down to about the 32, a gain of eight. Luke Elliott as well as uh, Alex LaFon in on the tackle there for the Bruins, but not before Stanley's able to pick up enough for a first down. And you've got to think the Bruins would love to keep that goose egg up. They weren't able to do it against Hidden Valley two weeks ago. The defense gave up a touchdown with 42 seconds left. Here's the snap back to Hunter, the handoff to Stanley, and Floyd Clyburn and a host of Bruins bring him down for no game. Great job right there. Uh, Clyburn, uh, Epperly, and it looked like LaFon as well in on the tackle there for the Bruins. Five forty-five remaining in the game on a running clock. Blacksburg leading 35 nothing. Hunter throws along the side and bumping it away. Almost not seeing the ball, but bumping it away was Blake Staniland. Good coverage downfield. It's a good looking throw right there by uh, by Hunter. But Staniland uh, going step for step with him. And Blake did not see the ball, but his body was in the right place, and he's got a little bit of height, so. He can knock some of those kind of passes down without even having to see the ball at 6'4", 145. I think we've had a timeout called. Yeah, it looks like Christiansburg's going to call the timeout here. It's going to be uh, third and 10 when we return, uh, 5'17 to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. You're listening to Blacksburg Bruins football on your local station ESPN Blacksburg and 101.3 and 105.9. I'm Bob Lowe. I've been working for BT. I worked eight and a half years and then I left for four and a half and then I've been back about nine months. But there's something about driving a bus to me that I think just appeals to people because when I used to, I worked for Xerox for 38 years and I used to tell my buddy, I said, one of these days I'm going to drive the two town trolley. Then I retired and a year later I applied for a job here. So doing it so the same time. Well, I just love the people here. They're such a diverse group of people. And I've met people from all over the world, all different types of education levels, and from gardeners up to doctors, you know. So it's a fun job. It's good people to work with. And if you sit around the house and watch TV all day, you can get out here and have some fun instead. MJ Hunter dropped back to pass. He's flushed out of the pocket. He will be forced out of bounds at about the 28 yard line along the Christiansburg sideline. That'll bring up fourth down. And obviously, Christiansburg is going to go for it here. Parker Epperly runs him out of bounds over there. Going to bring up a big fourth down. It looks like they're going to call another timeout here. They are wanting to get in the end zone, as you can imagine. We'll take another 30-second timeout. You're listening to Bruins Football on your local station, ESPN Blacksburg and Z101.3, 35-0 Blacksburg leading. Three receivers in the boundary, which is the far side. A single receiver to the near side. Hunter drops back, wants to throw, fires the ball. Nowhere near his intended receiver, Caleb Henley. And Blacksburg will take over on downs. Jake Lyman, our River Ridge Dermatology sideline reporter. What have you got for us? Blanksburg offense on the field, first and ten. Thank you, Jake. I talked a little bit to Ty Quest down on the field. I said, not tonight. He said, nope, I'll be back 100% next week. And looking ahead, Brad, unless Carroll County can pull off the upset tonight over James River of Buchanan, who will come into that game at 7-2, 
it almost looks like the points are going to have Blacksburg here at Bill Brown Stadium against Liberty Christian Academy. Here's a snap back to Luke Goforth. Started to throw it. It's in trouble. Now he's going to throw it deep, and he has Blake Staniland who catches it at the midfield stripe. No, they're going to say he did not catch it, could not hang on. Looked like he had it for a moment, but couldn't quite hang on. It was real close. Good job there by Gofor, sort of buying a little time. A good block out here on the by the receiver. Uh, linebacker was bearing down, and I uh, was able to get a pad on him to give him a little extra time. Just wasn't able to connect on that one. The Region 4D standings, Blacksburg, of course, in first place. EC Glass appears to have second place pretty much locked up. And then it's a very fluid situation with Pulaski County, Salem, Jefferson Forest, and George Washington Danville. Who knows how that's going to turn out in three through six. Number seven, it looks like William Bird's got that locked up. And then it could potentially be Carroll County, but more than likely it will be Liberty Christian Academy for the first time ever the Blacksburg will have played them if that's the way that the standings come out on Monday at about noon. Well, and if they if they do end up playing Liberty Christian, I think that there's a former Bruin that actually plays on that team, uh, uh, Renning, uh, Renning uh, uh, Bornstead. Bornstead does play for Liberty Christian. Brother Caleb was a quarterback and wide receiver here and then transferred to Liberty Christian. Here's Goforth rolling to his right, looking, throwing, has his receiver, and it's intercepted by Caleb Henley at about the 41-yard line. A well-thrown ball, but there are two penalty flags down at about the 30-yard line of Blacksburg. Like it, they're saying a personal foul against Blacksburg, like a targeting penalty. I don't, I don't understand where that's come from, coming from. The officials are talking it over. There's two flags on the field. Coach Sloss is standing out the numbers as if, as if to say, can you please explain this? Officials pointing towards the Blacksburg side, now has his thumb pointing back towards the Blacksburg side. Four officials are gathered at about the 25 yard line on the near side hash. And this one, this one is taking quite a while to get figured out. It's gonna be a markup on Christiansburg. I thought maybe it was a roughing the passer call. Official is walking with the football all the way up past midfield. The 45 to the 41 yard line. Well, I don't know, Robbie, you're the former official. I don't know if you can tell us what happened there, but. It's some sort of personal foul, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, but it ends up. I mean, it's it, it must be offsetting because they're they get the ball where the where the interception was. It does appear like it's offsetting penalties because that is right where the interception occurred was at the 41. Okay. Three receivers right, single receiver left. Hunter, the quarterback, snap comes back, handoff comes to Stanley, and he gets knifed right at the line of scrimmage by Parker Epperly. Parker's getting in the mix there. He, uh, he He's like a knife. He'll, he'll catch you. Now i got to ask you this question. When you were playing in the backyard with the kids, did they take it easy on Dad, or did they occasionally rough Dad up? Oh, they, they roughed me up. <laughs> Three receivers right, single receiver left. Here's a quick slant pass caught on the run by Henley, and he's going to be tackled at about the 35-yard line of Blacksburg. Epperly again on the tackle, and the flag comes down right where he was tackled. I don't understand what the flag is on this one. It has been a flag fest here in the fourth quarter. Two minutes, seven seconds remaining. 35 nothing Blacksburg with the lead. Are they calling a face, face mask? mask? It's a five-yard face mask penalty on Blacksburg. That'll move the ball inside the 30 to the 29 on the near side hash. Triplets for Christiansburg to the right. Single receiver to the near side is Jordan Harmon. Hunter waits for the official to start play. There's the signal. 
Here's the handoff to Stanley, and he's going to be brought down after a gain of about two or three. It took several Bruins to bring him down. He kept the legs churning. He'll have it down to the 27-yard line. A gain of two. Yeah, you're not going to be able to bring him down up high. Uh, you're going to have to cut him low. 139 remaining in the game. The clock running. Blacksburg trying to preserve the shutout. Snap back to Hunter. Throws it out in the flat. Gets it to Henley. Henley's going to be brought down at about the 21 yard line. A gain of six. 15 to 34 on the tackle. Alex Lafon, as well as uh, looks like Blake Stanland in on the tackle there. 110 remaining in the game, 35 nothing. Blacksburg leading. Triplets right, single receiver left. Hunter in the shotgun, has Stanley with him to his left. Hunter, straight drop, throws, going into the end zone and just off of the fingertips of Caleb Henley. And the clock will continue to run. Henley is taking his time getting back to the line of scrimmage. Just jogging back. I don't think he realizes that clock is continuing to run. But it's fourth and short here for the Blue Demons. Three receivers right, single receiver left. Hunter in the shotgun. Hands it off to Stanley. Stanley will be brought down at about the 14-yard line. There's 21 seconds left. Christiansburg not really in hurry up mode. This will probably be the final play of the game. Triplets to the right, single receiver to the left. Stanley in the backfield with Hunter. Back comes the snap. Hunter will run it straight ahead. He gets around the edge. One man to beat. Does he get into the end zone? He's out of bounds. No, he is out of bounds and the game is over and Blacksburg has done it. P-E-R-F-E-C-T-10 and O for Blacksburg. What a great season for this Bruin football team, 10 and 0. You don't hear that often, Mark. You just don't hear that often. Blacksburg runs the table for just the second time in school history. They join the 1976 then Indians, now Bruins, as the only two Blacksburg High School teams to conclude a 10-game regular season unbeaten. What an accomplishment.